Um, we do have our minutes from our last meeting. I'd entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Al Wick, second. Second. Jarvis, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Both opposed the same. Okay. All right. Um, last meeting, we had a lot of work to do in interviewing consultants. And, one. We're very happy to have them here to give us the presentation. So uh, without any further ado, why don't we hand it off to you and, and get started, get the kickoff meeting started. Yeah. I think first and foremost, I need to apologize. I uh, had four o'clock on my calendar for the meeting, so I want that to convey that uh, we were just running late. So uh, anyway, oversight on my part. But uh, anyway, we're here and uh, appreciate everyone appreciate the uh, vote for uh, us to be selected to work on the study. A uh, couple of things, I, I think uh, it looks like you've got booklets that might certainly uh, handed out the materials that uh, I think we have a contract that's in place now and uh, we're going to be working on a task order format. So some of the information that we're going to be presenting here today is really, um, I think as we go through this, it can ebb and flow, um, you know, as you get into some of these details. You, you may want to try to put more effort in one area and less on another as you get into it. So, but uh, what we're going to present here today is kind of a snapshot, a draft view of, of the overall uh, work plan as we would see it right now. And uh, then from there, uh, we would be going out of this meeting. What we want to do at the end of the meeting is really kind of open it up to the committee a little bit and get some of your input. Um, you know, we've got in our scope and what we're going to be doing is going out interviewing uh, you know different individuals within the uh, community and area to try to understand different perspectives on what uh, growth opportunities may be out in the uh, study area but certainly there was a the task force is what we're represented as far as uh, from the airport and the county and the city and so there's a wealth of knowledge right in this group and we wanted to, to be able you know right out of the gate to capture some of that um, then after that, we'll be jumping into a lot of our uh, work assignments and actually starting to dig in and gather the data. Um, which button was it? Turn the right. You can't turn it on. What was it? It's right backwards, so. Oh, because the unit is in the Oh, yeah. That is a USB port. <laughs> <laughs> That's what computers. No wonder about working. No, I'll put it over. Take a second to talk what to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, in the meantime, I'll mm -hmm. see if I can get the page down button. Okay, uh, just briefly, we wanted to remind everyone who the project team is uh, because it is not just one individual firm. Um, my name is Brad Hamilton. I'm with Crawford Roof Utility, the project manager uh, on this project. In addition, um, as far as our team, we have uh, Cam uh, Camaros, uh, who is represented today by Bill James uh, to my left. And then uh, Blaine Canada, Eric Canada, uh, is involved from the economic development side. CMT, we bring the aviation piece and the transportation piece to this study. Uh, Camaros will bring the land use planning and they also do have a uh, background in economic development as well and understanding that and then uh, Blaine Canada will bring the uh, specifically the economic development piece. Um, we believe that uh, it's a good team, uh, that uh, we have all worked together on past projects and think it will be a good fit for uh, Kankakee. As far as the organizational chart, uh, I'm going to be the project manager again, uh, Bill James. Um, Bill has 20, over 20 years experience. Over 20. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not say how much over 20. Okay, but. over 20. Uh, Roger Austin is another individual within our firm uh, who will also be, has quite a bit of experience within CMT, kind of brings some of the aviation and land use pieces together. Uh, Roger and Bill have worked together on other projects. Transportation piece uh, would be by CMT, and we have a couple of one highway design engineer, and then also a uh, intersection 
uh, design engineer that will be available for our team. And then lastly, economic development and marketing uh, we'll be looking at uh, covered by Air Canada. As far as the highlights, um, we developed this according to deliverables. You know, there are different ways to break this project up, and the best way we saw to break it up was, and we're going to work in the task order format, was to identify a workflow and then a deliverable that would be associated with that. And so that's the way the work program is presented, um, the elements being culminating in some sort of deliverable to the uh, task force. Um, as we talked about in the interview, the, you know, what we had to do, I think one of the challenges was to maximize the, the, the uh, work available with the budget. And uh, so some of the things that we've done in our work plan to really try to do that was to, you know, do as many things as we could by telephone, working with the county staff and having them do some of the work elements and data gathering and so forth. And then a lot of our trips would be coordinated, uh, so we would be doing more than one thing at a time. Um, and some of the meetings here later on, some of them will actually, I'll be at every meeting, but Bill won't be at every meeting. Bill will only be at some of the meetings where he is most key to. Um, overall, uh, we've got a plan that will show a six month completion time frame, which is, I believe, what the task force was looking for. As far as the work plan itself, the summary would be uh, starting off today. Uh, the element number one is the formulation of data gathering pieces. Um, we wanted to come and right out of the gate present to the task force what we'll be doing and then also get information from you as well. Uh, Bill has been driving around. I'm somewhat familiar with the area. Obviously, Bill has uh, been driving around today doing a site visit to better understand uh, the land uses that are here today. Um, after we leave from here, we're going to be digging in, working with Mike and uh, doing a lot of data collection and gathering, getting all the mapping resources put together, and then really digging into the interview piece of it. Uh, we've got scoped in there up to 20 interviews uh, that will primarily be conducted by uh, Bill and Eric uh, to talk to different uh, individuals within the community and try to understand what dynamics are in place here today. And that will be from the, uh, you know, the public side being talking to the city and the county, any other municipal entities that would be involved, talking on the private side, talking to maybe developers or real estate uh, brokers, uh, talking to the college, different you know, quasi-public entities that would be out there as well as IDOT and uh, individuals outside of this room. So we're going to be working with Mike to get that list put together. Uh, we've got the categories outlined that I think you know, certainly look for input from Mike as far as who those individuals and the task force, who those individuals would be. But that's going to be certainly a key input to what we're going to be, uh, the recommendations would be. Um, after element number one is complete, we're going to go in right into element number two. These will kind of be seen together. Um, and what this is going to result in is a deliverable of a baseline assessment of the conditions, the physical conditions and also the market conditions for the study area. First of all, what we're going to be in, under the baseline physical conditions going out and trying to assess utilities, land use, you know, roadways, what types of development are out there already, what's you know on the books as far as comprehensive planning to date, zoning, all the different things, environmental airspace that could affect what development uh, opportunities or constraints would be out there. Um, in addition to that, we're going to be looking at the market conditions and talking to what things influence whether they attract or, or detract from development coming to this uh, area. Also understanding your, the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats that may be associated with that area. Uh, what we want to try to do is give you a candid assessment of what it would be, but certainly give you an action plan as you leave as to what things you could better do to position and try to open up that, that area and best utilize it uh, for the land uses that it, it could support. Uh, lastly, the airport related opportunities and constraints, which is unique. Uh, and I don't say lastly because it's least important, but certainly uh, the airport is the centerpiece of this. Um, we would certainly bring a lot of those opportunities and define the role of the airport 
and then also what that role means as far as attracting aviation related type uses that would be out there. Certainly the entire study area is not going to be aviation related development. I think we can all agree upon that. But uh, first and foremost, the airport is the center of this project. We need to understand what those opportunities would be and then what would be derived out of the other benefits of having utilities and transportation infrastructure already in place that travel through the study area. After that point, uh, the, that would be where we would have our second task force meeting. And in conjunction with that, what we'll be uh, bringing back is a slide presentation of uh, what we found today, several exhibits, also a summary of the uh, what we find would be key issues associated with the physical and market conditions of the area. And then at that point, what we had proposed and worked with Mike on was a first public meeting to really just kind of provide some of that information out to the public and what we found under the baseline scenarios. Uh, that meeting would simply be uh, attended or be more of a presentation type format and a second meeting would be more of an open, uh, open house type format. The third element would be really where we get into the development of the concepts and strategies, uh, both on the land use side of the house and the development regulations and then also the economic development opportunities that exist. And certainly, you know, these all tie together. And so one drives the other. Um, so it, it's gonna be a little bit of a back and forth and working together and trying to formulate, you know, what opportunities exist and how the land use would support that. But what we would come back with after that is a master plan that creates a vision. You know, as we, Bill and I talked about, and I think Bill made a great point was that you know, when people come in and they're looking for opportunities to develop, if you've got a master plan laid out, I mean, they may not see development out there, but they certainly understand that there are entities involved that are wanting to promote and uh, encourage development in those areas, and there is a coordinated plan to accomplish that. Um, in addition to that, not only the master plan piece of it and the land use, <coughs> but also the development regulations that would support that to make sure that there aren't incompatible uses that go into place and uh, something where you allow a residential unit and all of a sudden, you know, a d development that comes in that would be a different use that you can no longer do that, or vice versa. And then lastly, the economic development strategies. This would not, this would be taking the baseline conditions that Eric would be looking at and then building upon that to give actual recommendations as to what things would work best to encourage development in that area. That would culminate in a third task force meeting and then a second public meeting after that. Uh, this, both the task force meeting and the public meeting, all of the consultant team will be here for the, both of those meetings to uh, represent the study. Then after that, uh, the last would be simply putting the report together. We are looking at having a draft report. We'll be presenting under elements two and three slide presentations of information uh, that will be summaries and then also exhibits. And then after that, uh, we would put the report together based upon what the task force gives input on and as far as changes and recommendations. And then the last uh, would be a final task force meeting that would give the overall recommendations that have been reviewed by the task force and that would be presented uh, as part of the final report. As far as the schedule that we put together, um, I just lumped these into two months and they're really kind of coordinated after Mike sent out a list of meetings uh, for the task force. Uh, what we talked about with Mike was uh, the meetings, to have a meeting every month may not be as useful as having the meetings when we have the data ready and ready to review. So how we've kind of organized these are around the end of the meeting months, like May 29th, July 31st, September 25th, and October 30th. And so what you'll see is under the month of May, and actually, you know, we're going to be right into June, July. We have our first task force meeting and site visit. 
Uh, next week, we'll be starting on the data gathering and baseline conditions, and then at the end of the, uh, July, we'll be coming back and having our second task force meeting and our public hearing, first public meeting. Uh, for the months of October, August and September, we'll be going into the recommendations piece of it, uh, culminating in meeting number three for the task force, and then our second public meeting, and then from that we come out and in October generate our final report and have a final presentation to the task force. As far as work that we've completed today, obviously we went through and uh, prepared a, a draft work plan, uh, worked with Mike uh, to get the professional services agreement put together. Uh, the formulation of the task orders we still are, are working on. And then uh, the interviewee list, um, we have I, er, a list of, not names, but uh, entities that uh, we think will be important to interview and getting that data to the town. So um, really the next two months, we're going to be focusing on the data gathering, interviews and surveys, and then the baseline conditions assessment. Um, that's kind of our work plan and uh, the schedule that we're, we're looking at. For that, I don't know if there are any questions related to that specifically. Do you have the project schedule? Yeah. When we formulated the RFQ for this, our, our intent for the first public meeting was to have, to invite all the property owners in the study area. That was nice whenever we didn't know how many there were. There's 700 of them. <laughs> really? um, that was a little bit of a shock when we put the list together. I'm, I'm curious as if we do, we send out a letter for the 700, what do we have to show them at that, at that first public meeting? Well, it will be just existing information, really. And what we had thought about, Mike, was that the most, you know, we wondered if the first public meeting was maybe not even as, certainly not as important as the second one where we're actually presenting recommendations to get input and actually present information out. This would simply be, we're reporting out as to what exists today. So, you know, a lot of them may show up and say, hey, well, golly, I already knew that, you know, there was a road there. Yeah. And, and so it gets a little bit, um, honestly, if that public meeting did not, you know, happen, that would probably allow some budget to do some other things in a little more detail. I don't. What, what about shifting public meeting one to where we got public meeting two and then moving public meeting, meeting two to October? Does that make any sense? Uh, the reports may have to be re introduced as you know an organization there or it have to be presented publicly what's that the final report it can be yes and mike and i had a conversation yesterday about this I, I guess we have a concern the first time that we see anything you've done we've got a public meeting that night that doesn't feel right yeah, we're, we're not going to throw everything to you. We're going to give it to you in advance. But yeah, I, I, I don't disagree that even if you've had it in advance, um, that does that give out of time? I get, I feel more comfortable with public meeting one was where public meeting two is. And Same, you're only talking about four minutes in this process? We had six in the proposal. I'm waiting right. for them to, tell, to convince me that four is better than six. I'm wondering if, if we can go back to the six because on this June, July, do we do a preliminary and then have a public meeting with the existing conditions? At least we have some, you know, first passes out there. You understand it, sir? No, I understand it. I'm, we're just simply trying to work within the budget as well, too. Jeff asked a really good question during the end of the process. Which you one? do this inside 50000 bucks. Oh, well. That's what's going to get Yeah, it's just, uh, we're talking about two hours. I'm not too concerned about it. I mean, I, I think that, you know, the most important part of this plan, you know, this exercise is I think the first 60 days where they're bringing butt up to speed and mm -hmm. starting to get that. I'm less concerned about meeting as they're doing that. But I would like to have, you know, I would like to get together at least somehow where we can you know, get an understanding of where you guys are, with, you know, 
you know, what you're what you're hearing, what kind of feedback you're sure. getting, and what direction you know the um, the product is going. You know, another way to do that would maybe you know, in lieu of um, actually attending face to face, would be to prepare a status report of some sort. But I don't know that that gives you full information as to what you need. I mean, I, we can certainly move the this meeting over to the you know concept development, and then the last one you know over into the uh, after the final report. Make sense. Well, task force meeting four. Is that <coughs> how? What word was your idea there? That was simply a, a reporting of the final report to the task force, and then if you want to report that to the public as well, that could certainly happen the same night. That's what I would think. Sure. The the one thing I would say, and I agree that it is a, you know a concern that for us to have these two meetings the same day is difficult. Um, and so, I think if, if we got the, if we could get any documentation that's going to be presented at the public meeting with you know two weeks in advance or okay. something like that, I think that we could. I, I, I I'm only speaking for myself. I would feel comfortable reviewing it, you know, within a couple days. And if I had any big concerns, we could get the other information back to them as soon as possible. And then, you know, maybe just have a you know a pre-public meeting where we kind of. Make sure we're all on the same page, and we're, you know, we know where things are going to go when the when we invite the public to come. Let, let me give you our vision of a public meeting. This is what we've done that, that seems to work well for us. From four o'clock to seven o'clock, they can come whenever they want. There's a slot. There's a PowerPoint in one of the rooms where they can attend that first, and then there's there's exhibits in the other room where they can walk through with somebody and look at all the exhibits. It is not our intent ever to stand up in front of a crowd and tell them what we think and defy to ask them to say something back at us. Because they will. <laughs> we, don't want to, we don't ever want to, you know, we don't, we don't want to ever, well, no, I, but so so this, is, this is a, 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 this is a, this is an engaging process. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I want to leave it. And it does, in an open house format, works just as well. Because they can, they can find who the person is that might have the interest in the environmental aspects well, of transportation, land use. And they can engage them one on one and get any issues. And it's worked for us. And that's worked out pretty well. We have cards in which they can write any comments on it and mm -hmm. submit them or, or that means whatever. If we have a meeting the same day, we need to move it back to well, it doesn't one o'clock. Yeah, so. Well, I mean, it, could, it doesn't have to be that long. I mean, so is Brad maybe proposing here that we have this early with the public meeting just to get a pulse of what what the public feels in this. Is that what you well, were that's what we originally talked about, but uh, certainly we can shift that back. Honestly, the last task force meeting, you know, task force is going to know prior to that meeting what the right. recommendations are going to be. You could almost have the task force meeting as a public meeting, and it's a presentation to the task force and the public is invited. That's what I would say. That was sure. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move the what I would call more of the public hearing back and then the the last task force meeting becomes a presentation to the public. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My concern is that that first time you get those people there, if you don't have anything to show them they don't already know, they're gonna want to know I, I don't disagree. Sure. Yep. And then at this point when we have this meeting, I mean the recommendations are still draft. The task force has seen them we've had an opportunity to review them, but they're still draft. What are you talking about two public meetings? Right. You stick yourself on, on that idea of two public meetings. Well, the, the concept would be this would be a separate public meeting that would be later in the day, and then this would be a a task force meeting that also happens to be a public well, we invite the, invitation. And we'll invite the public to attend and hear the presentation, just like today. I mean, but we'll maybe do it in a different form, you know, a form, a different venue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's important because you know, you know how people think, and a lot of them say, "Well, we'll never know anything." You know, in the last moment they're pulling this on us. You know, we're not ready for this. You know how people, I'm like, a lot of people out there think that. <laughs> and, they, and they say, "You know, what are we trying to pull over us now?" We don't know anything about this, but you know, and I really think that we need, need to make it a concerted effort to, to get the people at least you know communicate with them 
that this meeting is taking place and they, you know, we want them to well, attend. every, all we'll 700, we'll, we'll send a letter out to every one of those. You know, we'll want them to attend. You know, we want them to be there. You know. But, uh, and, and then beyond that, you know, what can you, some people never want to take. I just was you know, possible to get a large number. Later on. Yeah. You could get a large number. Yeah. I don't read that far. So <laughs> the location would have to be. But I well, certainly think so. you're, you're going to get quite a few people at the open house meeting. You know, curiosity number one. And number two, you're, you know, you're making some draft recommendations at that point. So, well, Frank, would you have the, can we have that first, that public hearing there sometime maybe the beginning of August so that there's at least maybe 45, 60 days between that and the October meeting? You know, you've got that August, September sure. in there, so maybe we have it. Let, let me go back, and, and I think there are two ways, Mike, that we could probably do that. One would be, you know, to lengthen this out a little bit. I want to make sure that I talk to Eric and Bill no and that we've got adequate time to get the information. Let's face them a little bit for maybe the issue 10 says, you know, we sure. just drop something on us and you only have four weeks to make a plan. We, we want some time spread out so that, you know, maybe council members want to get, you know, maybe property members want to talk to the city council members or county board members or yeah. if it becomes that kind of Could I suggest that we're concerned about the consultant's time? What if um, we have interim meetings just with this commission? We plan yeah. on doing that. Okay, that would help. And then we're we're the consultants don't have to come to the in-between that, yeah. and we can still mm -hmm. go through that. We'll talk about it Well, <laughs> save some time and efficiency. In the same token, uh, the concept development, we can be talking concepts in the first, mm -hmm. first session, so some of that trickles forward. Sure. Hopefully. Brad, we've already done an existing land use survey of the area. Um, I think we probably have most of the natural, in the natural resource inventories done. Yeah. And um, the transportation, you know, all the roads are in the got all that information already. Um, 6,000 road study has a component that's probably in this area, Mike. Mm -hmm. So we'll make sure that they get up that plan. Uh, the city of King Keys plan is uh, 12 years old, might be a little bit updated for the area, but it might still be useful to a certain extent. Um, you your hands on one? Okay. Our kind of plan does does uh, look at the area, but not very, um, well, it's not significant at all because it's an urbanized, that's an urbanized area. So we don't have much from that perspective. You've got the uh, airport plan, right, right, master plan, so that's, seems to be in pretty much in order. Um, the one thing that I do want to make sure that you get, because I think it could be a very nice model for land use regulation, I don't know why they would, couldn't be applicable here, is the Tri-Village plan that we did, that we're the 6,000 interchange that we're proposing. Mm -hmm. We did a land use component, and we also pretty much put together uh, all the various uh, uh, land use regulations we would like to have in 57. So that will, I was telling them about the Tri Village plan. Yeah, I don't know to give them a copy. We, you know, we, we got a new soil survey, so we can give you all the soil maps are done, the floodplain surveys are done. Um, I don't know about wetlands. We have those. Okay. Utilities? No. Wow. Well, sort of. I believe I have some more. Yeah, those would be the main ones. Through the whole study here? There isn't much down there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it comes out of the study area. Okay. We do have some, some wetlands, right, Sheriff? Mm -hmm. In that area? We found a couple. <laughs> we found a couple. So. <laughs> Mitigation's a wonderful word, isn't it? Okay. Well, and, and that's, I, I think, you know, some of that information may be, you know, the task order system benefits that because if a lot of that is already put together, that's correct. That's what we're hoping. Okay. Um, also, the probably the commuter rail study. Okay. There's a. You want to talk to us about the people that you got on the interview list or the positions you got on the interview list? I guess. Yeah, I, I think a lot of those. I mean, what I just mentioned, obviously. You know, city, county planning, EDC and chamber, um, airport authority, which, I mean, 
granted we work with the airport authority but still need to get input and part of that is certainly for the task force developers and realtors um, the quasi-public type folks IDOT um, those are some of them that the entities that we that's the governmental components yeah you even add salmon's point to that so well and, and point. that was going to be one of the you know some of the other you know entities certainly a rural park salmon's point um yes the township probably the township Okay. Well, you know, I think we can have that. Um, it has, it's been somewhat successful for smaller communities if we have one meeting where we invite Sam's Point or all the parts. I mean, we can do that in a, in a, in a, in a group setting. Okay. Because that, you know, what we talked about was, you know, probably you could find a handful of people and get 90% of the information that you need. Yeah. And then the rest, you know, the rest of the group it may be repetitive or. or Okay. When uh, are you going to be doing interviews before, between now and uh, our next meeting on June 26? Do you anticipate doing any at, before that time? Yes. I was going to say, as a group, if we want to take a look at a comprehensive list, Mike, could you possibly, in bracket, get the list that you think is uh, final and email it out to us just to review? We would like to, I mean, within a week to go ahead and, and have That's the list fine. finalized and then it's going to take a little while to get interviews set up and then get them conducted. No problem. And some of them we may want to do face-to-face -face versus over the telephone, so. No, that would be fine. Okay. And I is think that, there's... Is there anybody on the, on the task force have any objection to that? Can we take a look at them? Can you give us suggestions? Okay. Very good. All right. Okay. Um, I guess, you know, and this is a little bit of an open-ended question, but, you know, we've got a great note-taker here, and uh, uh, Doug along, who's also a pilot too, who flew over, we we'll right. to use, our, use the airport as much as we can. Um, one of the questions we wanted to ask the group right now is, is what kinds of influences, you know, as an open discussion, are you seeing out there as far as development, development opportunities, things that we need to be aware of more than just, you know, what's on a map, so to speak. And, you know, this is a little bit open-ended, but uh, if there are things that the, the group wanted to share right now, and uh, we're certainly anticipating getting some of that in interviews as well, too. Influences. Anybody? I hate in the corner over there, maybe. Well, we already have the, the, the jail's there, so I mean, I don't know if that's an end Are we still talking about the, uh, the well, marshals thing? Is that still an active topic? Mm -hmm. you talk to the sheriff about that? Mm -hmm. I think that the you know commercial you know right now I know there's an announcement of a large um, truck stop, but I don't know if that's kind of been on the I don't know if that's on the front burner or the back burner right now. I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, it was in the paper. That's the only thing. Okay, I, I didn't see it. What was the story? That's a good topic because we've we've talked in the past about trucks and their uh, the negativity of trucks through the county. But well, if we had to them, we we at one point I brought up with the six thousand interchange. Should we at least accommodate the massive trucks in a like a truck stop or something to to take care of these fellows? You can't complain. You don't Is this a zone that this could be helpful? Right. Because I think six thousand did not include that. Like no, Brad, no, I think Bourbon did. Bourbon did a little bit. Frank did. I'm not sure that's your last best thing from C. Actually, to three away at Walmart, they've been having a big truck stop there. Have that? Oh, kind of, yeah. There's <laughs> a <laughs> whole bunch of stuff. I'm in semi parking. I love it. Just need some gas. I guess what I'm going to do is a little bit of money. Money is 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 oh. pretty congested. Okay. It's terrible. And in, in a regional standpoint, is that something that could be mm -hmm. discussed? Um, should be had, discussed. It was before the plan commission that the South East Quadrant of 45 and 57. Yeah. At least a year ago. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Supposed to be a Love's truck stop. Love's, that's what it was. <coughs> so it's the economy, the, the logic is saying it's needed. Mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. the, 
Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I go along with you, you know, look what's happening up in Elmer. I mean, that, that, that warehouse there is just humongous, <laughs> and it's all trust. I think as we, I know that that's a very difficult open-ended question to uh, answer. Probably we, have, we could try to think about that a little bit. Okay. Well, we would. We would, we would I mean, certainly. I know we. You know, I certainly want to have a, 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 a you know a long conversation about what I see mm -hmm. happening out there. I don't know if this is the right form right. to do it, but eventually. Yeah. Um, well, I I think it could be as simple as if you know it doesn't have to be a. A long-winded discussion to give me an email with some highlights as to things that you know is there competition outside the area that would affect what's inside the area are the other communities and how they you know impact what would be in the study of the area known things on the airport such as the, the jail and, and things like that that would influence other development to come into it. Uh, developer type activities that are initiatives but maybe not well, things that have certainly want to make you aware of that in case there's an opportunity for clustering other right. development. So That's understand right. that. Okay. I understand. There probably will be a lot of questions from the neighborhoods that on the airport uh, usage, you know, as far as sure. Uh, oh, what right. does it what does it mean? You know, what does it mean to people? Uh, you know, the peace and quiet that's out there now, there's gonna be some concern. Right. But, yeah, that, I mean, certainly there's a lot of different dynamics that surround an airport, not just an aviation piece of it too, the roadways and the, you know, vehicles traveling to and from that if you're, you're seeing more development occur, but um, air, each airport is unique and the, you know, the impacts or, or you know, perceived things that, that positive or negative that people may have are, are or I guess would you suggest a timeline? Are we look? How far out are we looking for this plan? The short term, long term? We never defined that. Oh, the study year? Yeah. Well, the horizon. Yeah, the horizon. Yeah. Horizon. yeah. I, I would suggest something on the order of 20 years. Okay. I think if you go beyond that, it's just too far out. Uh, 20 years is is a time frame. I think that all of you can envision implementing sure. and and and. and uh, having certain involvement by people who are still on sure. the table. Um, I, I concur with that. And, and the airport, I mean, the FAA defined uh, time frame is 20 years as well, too. So that's where the airport's looking at. I think one thing we can accomplish with this meeting is to kind of frame questions that we might pose to the people on the interview list. And the knowledge that you have is, is key to that. Um, because we don't know all the players, uh, all, all, all the entities out there. I mean, for example, uh, sub, 700 plus property owners were mentioned. Is there, and some of these are homeowners obviously, is there an association at all of, of, of homeowners? Is there a, a, a group? There's no uh, association. Um, I mean, we obviously can't talk to uh, a whole range of property owners, but is there, is, is that input that you would like to get uh, homeowners from within the study area that, that we should that we should pick out somebody and talk to them. Uh, as Key leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah is, is that first of all is that important? A representative. A representative. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what are the concerns that they may have? Or you know, um, the airport is, it, is it just noise? Airport noise is the number one thing, and everything else falls off from there. Yeah. Our airport contingency, both of them. Ditch. Is yeah, there they, here? <laughs> they would probably have a better idea of who in their neighborhood engages them yeah. a little bit. So I would probably defer to them a little bit okay. on that. And uh -huh. Ken, I think this is in your district. And you might have some ideas of some people and you know, what defer to you and uh, the airport authority. Well, I know there's no group out there being represented by somebody. But once we start this, there will be. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example because this happened uh, with the. Uh, when the uh, park district was talking about developing, um, trading off some property at the oh. at the curb by uh, River Road Park, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, that that will uh, there there's people that are very intelligent and, and, and up to date. They'll they'll uh, collect and they'll talk about that. They want you know that was that became a very negative issue, especially when it has to touch the river. So um, the nature natural aspects of what's out there. Are key. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be uh, talk about that. I know a lot of people are that way that, that were vocal. Uh, 
at that first pass as well. Right. You know, right. Basically, shot that you know that that went down pretty quickly <laughs> because of that negativity. Right. Well, I, I think that you know we're kind of say two kinds of interviews. One where people have information that's key to our work and, and, and recommendations that we might form. And then there are the kind of PR interviews where we can say we talked to them and we got their concerns and um, A, we, you know, if, if there are issues or access to ground, we have them out on the table. Uh, but B, we, we, we can say that we reached out to them and that we were concerned enough to talk to them. And you know, we just, we kind of need to know what groups these, these different people fall into. Sure. Yeah. Well, and that's a legitimate point because success depends upon being able to capture a plan or a vision that works uh, for the, the general public. And uh, so, under, you know, obviously you can't interview 700 people, but if you can find a representative or two that would reflect that, that may yeah, be. I could, I could almost name some people right down, right down the, uh, about a two mile span. Let me, uh, I guess one of the things we wanted to kind of frame too is our vision of what we would deliver. Um, you know, we can go through and, you know, studies can be voluminous as far as research and background and, and rationale. Uh, we envision this more as an action plan, the result of it. And I guess I wanted to, you know, throw that out to the task force committee that, you know, at the end of this, the main point of this is to really get at what steps need to be done to not only, you know, identify and, and have a coordinated plan for land use, but you know, what opportunities are out there that the, the uh, you know, the governmental bodies or you know, developers can do to try to stimulate growth in the area. Well, I, and I agree. I, I think that you know, I, I'd like to, get, um, you know, maybe. A, Know, build, or take a look at our um, Tri Village plan that we had done. We work with HNTP to do that. Um, if there's a possibility of doing something in that format, which I don't think would be that much, you know, we basically did the, some of the land use per objectives in that and the land use plan. But what key elements we looked at is specific land uses that we could, uh, that the county and then our municipalities could agree on, but then it also looked at access uh, roadway access signage the aesthetics of the of buildings along primarily the i-57 mm -hmm. uh, visual area setbacks from i-57 this whole but we can really adapt i think something that we've already done along sure. the i-57 corridor to this area and but take a look at it and what, what, what three villages did this that was mantino bourbon a bradley and the county and in this case, we'd be looking only at the city of Kankakee and the county. Those are the only two jurisdictions we'd have to deal with, basically. Maybe Salmon's point, but I don't see what. But I, I think you've got to know Salmon's point. They're, they're valid. And well, one question I had when you brought up the, the, the notion of talking to the, the small townships, what perspective are they going to bring? I mean, not, not that you know any perspective is not legitimate, but just what would their mindset be? What concerns would they have? What you know questions should we ask them? Mm -hmm. um, There's some very important roads that are township jurisdiction in your area. That's not typical in parts of the county. When you say important. Auto Road is a township road, which goes over the interstate. That's our only overpass on the interstate in that area. That's, that's fairly well, and Sammons Point has jurisdiction over that now. Some of that. Pieces of it. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about 45 as it goes over I 57? No, there's a road that goes west off 45 and crosses that bridge. But is that in our study area? Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. So At the corner? It's the southern edge of the Okay. That's the interchange? That just goes over. No, it's a little bit over. It's the only one. Oh, I see. It's this, this one here. Yeah. Okay. That's a fairly new so, so the townships would be. Uh, right about impacts on the roadway, no. improvements to roadways, no. and no. connectivity no. to the larger, the larger towns, that kind of thing. Perhaps jobs. I don't know if they are not that good. Okay, okay. That's that's a fairly unusual circumstance. What do we do about um, technology, or does this would our this plan 
take into account um, the Piatone Airport? And in what way? It will mention it, but um, again, I, I think the question was asked in the interview. Yeah. I think there's some, uh, there's not a lot of commonality between the function of what that airport will have and what you see the role of okay. Camp Key having. But I think it would be remiss not to mention it in the report. Because I think would it be, yeah. So, okay. It's definitely not a competition. It's just, no, no. It's its own end. That's correct. Whether it's it don't happen or not, this still is a good airport. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But to say that, you know, a Kankakee is going to have major commercial flights and, and you know, you're talking a different role. It might be smart to talk about that as you talk to neighborhood people, too, that they understand well, what they're trying to be. Honestly, when yeah. you talk to people, that's the biggest misnomer yeah. is that, okay, I'm going to have 747s flying yeah. over my head. Yeah. Um, because somebody's plan doing some planning out there, and, and you know that's clearly not the case. And, uh, you know, the, you know, not to say that this runway certainly right now will support some commercial aircraft, but it's not designed to, uh, you know, to handle a lot. Yeah, that takeoffs every ten minutes or something. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> to Detroit. Well, it would probably be useful to be armed with certain facts and statistics when we talk to people who might not be knowledgeable about the airport just again for that PR uh, uh, function to, to lay to rest some of the misnomers that people have or, or the f unfounded fears that they may have regarding this airport. Probably that would be a fact piece on the airport. We can bring it with us actually. Yeah, we do them all the time. Yeah. And, you're look, and you're looking at a situation where one of the things that people have pushed is you've got a longer runway here than you've got a midway. Well, people are going to be scared that you're going to turn this into midway. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, there's certainly, you know, this airport, lots of times what you'll say, you know, especially in commercial service, because that's where most people are thinking it's going. If commercial, the demand for commercial service were here already enough to support it here, it would be here. And because uh, airlines are certainly always looking for opportunities to better, you know, leverage uh, market share. But, um, you know, certainly it's, I think it's consistent within the airport authority and the FAA and the IDOT as to what the vision of this airport is. So. No air Wisconsin planes coming in in the near future? <laughs> Never say never. I don't think they're existing. No, they don't exist. But I would be in general. But I, you know, at the same time, to say that no commercial type aircraft will ever land here, that's that's not true either. Well, I mean, certainly, the runway can Where do people go to catch a commercial flight over here? Midway, 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 or Indianapolis. Or Indianapolis. Well, Bloomington will take you to... Well, yeah, we actually did some work from Bloomington. Or Orlando, 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 very yeah. easily. It depends on where you're going, I suppose. I mean, is there any possibility of, of like a shuttle flight to, to an airport? Or that's not, not really... No, that's more going away. I mean, certainly you're within close enough distance to Chicago. And the airport's the size of Bloomington. Um, you know, or, or fighting to keep the, you know, not just Bloomington, but those sizes of airports right. are fighting right. to keep the. It takes us 50 minutes to get to Midway. I mean, so. Yeah, I mean, um, for example, people who go up and, and take flights out of Milwaukee to avoid the congestion here, a lot of times those flights will connect into O'Hare and then, and right. then yeah. go on to their final destination. Yeah, that's only as you get enough market to be able to do that, and a lot of those may be international, trying to get back into O'Hare. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, for airports, from the aviation side of it, for airports this size, what you're seeing is actually a decline in the, the small single engine operators 
um, on a leisure or recreation type basis, you're still seeing like Doug and I flew in a single engine airplane that we're flying for business. Um, and you see, or you're actually seeing an increase in the corporate activity usage. Uh, a lot of businesses are now, instead of flying commercially and having to go through the, the security issues that we all have to go through, um, you can actually, you know, much, maybe not cheaper, but much more efficiently pay, uh, you know, into a timeshare in an airplane or a net jets or whatever it may be. And uh, the fractional ownership market, uh, the air taxi market is just booming um, in aviation right now, the production of those types of airplanes. And so you're just either seeing the very small business jets, the new very light jets that are coming on, or seeing the very large transcontinental uh, corporate aircraft that are flying six, seven thousand nautical miles. And uh, so, you know, I, I think you're going to see some of those dynamics, you know, certainly not just at Kankakee, but everywhere else. But Kankakee is, um, you know, it's a, it's a little too far to be called a reliever to Chicago. There's a designation for airports that if you're within a certain distance of a major hub airport, you can be designated as a reliever, and that means that you relieve the smaller traffic away from the larger airport, and they operate in the system. Um, this airport, I would say, operates that way even though it doesn't you know, function in that designation. So it, it provides a lot of capabilities for corporate entities to come in to, you know, directly in the Kankakee. But fuel will certainly affect that. Any other questions? I think we've got a pretty good strategy to go forward. Any other comments? Kelly, guy? Sure. Okay. Alright, Yeah, we just need to get our list together so we can start getting into the plans that we might have. Yeah, the plans would be very useful to get as soon as we can. If you want to send them in a PDF format to us, yeah, that would be No, what format are we going to be able to do that in? Well, we have them all in PDF. I'm just not sure if they're small enough to email, so we may have to put them on a CD. And That'd be great. They are all on our website, though, so you can probably download them on there. Okay. I mean, a, a list would be good too. Just shoot us a list and then we can go on your website and, and access them that way. So, tomorrow, you just get the list and then email it to Mike and I and we'll look at it Monday. Just double check we've got everything. We'll do. And I think the, the one other thing would be getting the GI. I, you had sent me the form. I don't have the form with me, but if you gave me another one, I could oh, sign it. Yeah. yeah, I could sign it right now and then you could load the GIS. You have one? Onto it. I think I gave you in the top of my hand. <laughs> I like you're getting like you're getting like me like. Hey, accident of the end. Okay, so it's not two. We're gonna have a a couple public meetings. One probably earlier August. We're gonna look at that. Mm -hmm. The one at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll we're gonna have. Um, okay, we're gonna continue our task force meetings, but we'll probably see you in. July, uh, I don't know what. We yeah, turned to July. Okay. We'll and see you and I think, July. you know, what we had set our meetings up around were end of the yeah. month doing that. And if we want to stay on that schedule, then. You know, we might meet for a half hour just to say that you can give us a report, Mike. It's entirely possible you'll see me in Springfield. It's entirely possible you'll see him in Springfield, too. That may be a good idea. Well, Take some money. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Anybody else? Anything else for the good of the order? They say in your schedule meeting is August 31st. Yeah. Tell me what you have. Sunday. It's August 31st or Sunday. It might be. Okay. We'll change that next time. Okay. Yeah. I got it. I got it. August 28th. I just want to Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Forty-eight would be uh. Somebody actually reads the agenda. Very good. I read it mine yet. Okay. All right. So on the twenty-six, you guys, Brad will be back on the twenty-six of June. In the meantime, we will meet. Oh, you no, know, I, I'll be on the line. But I, I would again. I think Mike's suggestion. You know, if we want to meet. And, I can give you a more complete download.
Well, and, I, and Mike and I will keep the task force uh, updated in the interim. Okay. All right. That's June 26, right? Thank you. We have to bring the airport guys up to this. Are you chasing the white people or what? The new year in town so they didn't show up? I wonder if they have a motion to adjourn. Second by Mr. Jarvis. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. We are adjourned.